Hi, welcome to What's the Tea in l &E. I'm Emily. And I'm Leah. We are management side employment attorneys with Woods Rogers and even our Black in Richmond, Virginia. And Leah, what are we here to discuss today? We are talking about, is it enough to just have a harassment reporting policy? And to talk to you about the effectiveness of a proper reporting policy, we are going to illustrate uh, some concerns with a very salacious case out of the District of Columbia. Yeah, really showing the gravity of what can happen if things don't go well. So in this case, we have a bisexual young male employee. He's hired as a recruiter. Um, and he alleges that his male manager repeatedly harassed him the entire time he was employed. And as evidence, he has submitted multiple sexually explicit text messages. Yeah, some of which I, I would not read out here on, aloud on camera. Um, but just for an example, he said something like, only incentive for you is getting slapped. Um, you're so effed up, sick and twisted, but I love it. There are also, also multiple allegations by the plaintiff that his boss repeatedly grabbed at his genitals on multiple instances. Uh, so you know, what they really ran into here, Leah, were some problems when this employee wanted to report what was happening to him. Yeah, in fact, the, the, the big question for the court was, was the harassment policy effective, the reporting policy? And the court ultimately found that no, it likely was not. And that's because the employee could report directly to his manager, who was the alleged harasser, or to the CEO. And there was an allegation that the manager, his direct manager had said to him, no, me and the CEO, we're BFF. So if you report to him, nothing's gonna happen. So the question there, you know, is it effective? Uh, so Emily, what is an effective reporting policy? What does that entail? Yeah. Well, you need to have more than just language. You need to have realistic ways for employees to take advantage of this reporting policy. So a way to do that is provide at least three avenues. A great, good way to do it is to tell employees they can report to HR. You need to have HR. They can report to the head of the company, the CEO, or another executive position, or report to any manager. Yeah, I like that. A policy that allows someone to report to any member of management, that's gonna allow for multiple reporting avenues, and there's gonna be no question for an employee to be able to say, oh no, I didn't feel comfortable reporting to this person because they had so many other people to report to. Another thing to consider is that if you have a workforce that is predominantly non-English speaking, you need to have the policy in that non-English language as well. And to make sure that you have more than one bilingual person to funnel and address those complaints. Absolutely. And you need to take prompt and effective action. This usually goes without saying, but I mean, in this case, another part of the problem is that when the company finally learned of what was going on, they were slow on the draw. So you wanna take prompt and effective remedial action. And finally, train your employees. Train employees on what is harassment and uh, where they can report it, and also train your managers on how to address complaints and handle those things. And with that, we want to thank you guys for another great episode of What's the Team in the L&E.